Hey guys and welcome back. I'm Rachel O'Leary and I thought today we would take a look at five species in the fish room that have really neat adaptations. Uh, so I thought we would start with the bamboo shrimp. Now unlike most other shrimp that have chelipeds or chela or essentially claws in order to eat food, these guys have adapted um, to utilize fans at the end of their legs in order to capture particles from the water. And this is because they come from head streams, um, headwaters from really fast moving streams near waterfalls generally. And they will use these fans to filter particles out of the water, sweep sediment, and generally just be the workhorses of those fast water environments. Um, they're really very fascinating. They get really large. You can see this one here is carrying eggs and those eggs won't develop in fresh water um, But they will become buried like this. All in all, they're a super fascinating species and can get quite a range of colors and well worth keeping. Just keep in mind that they would absolutely need an aquarium with a lot of flow so that they can properly feed. Now I feed these guys powdered foods or frozen baby brine and they do quite, quite well. Now our next species come from the same aquarium. This is my 150 gallon Hillstream Aquarium, which is pretty much full of all of these fish that have really unusual adaptations in order to deal with the flow. As you can see, these guys have a flat, flattened body style and it makes it so that they have less drag in the water in their native waters where they come from areas of high flow. Now things like the little Borneo suckers and the Sewellian here, the, the flatter fish, have um, the rounded head, flattened body, and enlarged fins, specifically their pectoral and pelvic fins, which allows them to hug the rocks and utilize less energy. There's also species in here like the stiffodons and the gobies whose pelvic fins are fused in order to make like a suction cup to allow them to hang on to the rocks and various surfaces that they come from. Really, really neat. It's also important to mention that these flat face fish are also off walks grazers, meaning they hug the surface of these rocks where they graze on the algae and the micro crustaceans that get caught in the algae as a really critical part of their diet. So it's important to make sure that you are feeding them properly should you keep them in the home aquarium. As you can see, there's quite the range of colors, shapes, and sizes, and they are a really fascinating and fun fish to keep. Up next, we're gonna look at my big boys, my primitive fish, my living fossils. These are my Polypterus and Lacairi, my Cuban gar, and my tropical gar. And these guys are unique for a few reasons. Uh, the, first of all, the Polypterus or the bikers or birchers or bashirs, however you wanna pronounce that, have two lungs, which allows them to breathe, breathe atmospheric air, while the gar have a modified gas bladder, which serves as a lung when they need it to, uh, when there's areas uh, that they're in that have super low oxygen content or when they're exerting a ton of energy. But both of these fish also have what are called ganoid scales, which are diamond shaped scales that interlock sort of like um, a peg and groove situation. And they're multi-level uh, scales. The most innermost being a really rigid bone, then sort of a spongy bone, then something called dentin, which is the same thing our teeth is made out, and then an outer layer of uh, ganoin, which is like enamel. And all of these are micro stitched together and it makes it so these fish aren't very flexible, but it makes them really, really tough. And in fact, in 2008, MIT was studying um, the Polypterus senegalis, the little tiny Senegal Bashir, at, when they were working on new designs for body armor because these guys' scales are so tough. I've always thought that was a neat fact and just wanted to share it with you guys. Up next, we have one of the smallest cichlids, the little shell-dwelling cichlid from Lake Tanganyika. Now, these guys are um, Neolamprologus multifasciatus, which are probably the smallest of the shell-dwellers. And what's really neat about these fish is that they have developed really strong social hierarchies, and they live 
hang out and breed in these shells. And in fact, the boys will go from territory to territory, stealing other boys' females, entice them into the shells, breed, and they protect their, their young in these shells and live out these really elaborate um, social hierarchies all in the bottom of this enormous lake. Now, in the aquarium, they're very easy to keep, but I think it's important to remember that despite their small size, these guys have massive personalities. And it's really important to give them more space than you think they need and also more shells than you think they need because they will readily go from shell to shell, though they do generally set up, as mentioned, a specific territory. These guys are super rewarding, super fun little fish, and one that I think any level of hobbyist would enjoy. Now, lastly, we're going to look at the bristlenose pleco. This particular bristlenose is a super red, which is a line bread color form, and they're really beautiful. What's interesting about these guys is that's a female on the wood there, and you can see that she doesn't have any of the bristles. These guys are named for the odontodes that they get on their um, operculum and their pectoral fins, as well as the large tentacles that the males get on their head. And this is real unique to this species. Uh, another thing that's really cool about Ancestress in general is not only are they good algae grazers, um, but they're easy to feed. But during breeding, the male is actually the one that guards the eggs. And as you can tell by the amount of young and small fish in this aquarium, they are quite good at their job. The males will trap a female in a cave where she'll deposit her eggs. He kicks her out and then he guards them until they hatch and become free swimming. It's really very fascinating and there's something pretty magical about the insane tentacles that these guys get on their faces. Now they generally get these by about an inch and a half or so and that's when you can start to sex them. Um, and they only get more and more impress impressive as the fish ages. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, a like, a share, and give me a comment so that the YouTube algorithm will reward that. As always, I appreciate your continued support.